The views expressed on this program are those of the producers and individuals appearing on this program and do not necessarily reflect the views of the Sun Prairie Media Center staff, its video service providers, or the staff and elected officials of the City of Sun Prairie. Hello, welcome into Mark Madness Sports uh, here on this Tuesday evening, actually. Uh, this is Mark Karstens, the host of Mark Madness Sports, and I am joined here today by my guest, Sun Prairie West girls flag head football coach, Chelsea Alt, uh, here on KSUN TV and also 103.5 The Sun Radio, if you're listening to the radio version. And how are you, I guess, today, Chelsea? I'll, I'll talk with, start with that, and I'm excited to talk about the girls flag football open with you. I'm doing great. Uh, it's good to be here. Thank you for having me. So I guess I'll start off saying I know the girls flag football open. It's a Packers girls flag football open. Uh, it'll take place on April 1st of this year, 2023. Uh, Ten teams are going to be at the event, I know. Um, and there'll be three games played, correct? Uh, correct. I think for each team. So, yep. um, And then there's also a skills competition before that. So um, I guess anything else you kind of want to share about this event that's kind of important, do you think? or? Um, I think it's just important because they invited the WIAA to try and get this um, started as a, um, an official high school sport in Wisconsin. So I think that's a huge thing, uh, just getting awareness to girls playing football. Yeah, no, I think that's great to share that. So um, what do you think are a couple things maybe that your team is most excited about this event? Do you think it's maybe just getting to go to Green Bay, getting to experience you know all these different things like touring Lambeau Field, which is yeah. an awesome opportunity, obviously, um, touring the Packers Hall of Fame. And then I think probably what's going to be really cool is getting to hear what Phoebe Schrechter, who you invited to this event, has to say, and her being someone who's coaching at the NFL circuit, um, getting to be a woman in, you know, in the coaching realm of football. Um, I think it's going to be really probably great for your team to hear from her. Absolutely. I think there's a lot of things that uh, cause the excitement for not only myself, but the players as well. Um, biggest thing, uh, Lambo Tour, I mean, who wouldn't be excited about that? So that's pretty awesome. And then just being able to learn the game of football and experience something new, uh, it's huge for these girls. And then Phoebe as well, I don't think they understand who she is or what she does yet, but once we get there, I think it's gonna hit them as a, a huge impact on not only the ones who continue to play flag football if they have that opportunity, but just to see a strong female leader um, in the game or in sports in general. Yeah, you usually just don't see that yep. that much at, yeah. at, in sports. So, um, and your team, Chelsea, I know is placed in the green group. So there's two different groups. There's a green group, and then there's the gold group. So there's five teams in the green group, um, and that is Clintonville, Divine Savior, Holy Angels, uh, Port Washington, Shawano, and then you, and then Sun Prairie West. Yep. Uh, and then in the gold group, you have Clayton, uh, Green Bay, New Lutheran, Milwaukee Region or Regan, excuse me, Rufus King, and then Wyowega Fremont. Is that, did I pronounce that right? I actually <laughs> have never heard of pretty much any of these teams, <laughs> so there's no scouting going on, because obviously this is brand new, and I don't even know where half those schools are located, but we're gonna come ready. I think Wyowega Fremont, I think is ne not too far from Green Bay, actually. Yeah, I think a majority of them are Green Bay, kind of near Green Bay, other than the Milwaukee teams. Yeah, no, I think so. I think you're right. Yeah. Um, I, well, Port Washington, I know is north. I know that's north of Milwaukee a little bit. Yeah. Um, I, I don't know where Clintonville is. Yeah. I think Divine Savior Holy Angels. I think that's in Milwaukee. I believe. Sounds likely. Yeah. I, I think, think so. I, when I looked them up, I think most were Green Bay or Milwaukee. But either way, I know nothing about any of them. So it, it'll be interesting to see what type of teams they put together. Yes. No. Definitely. So, um, kind of what what do you think things your team is going to need to do well in this event? to be one of the top teams that comes out of this event? Because, I mean, I know, obviously, it'd be great to see your team finish either at the top or at least very near the top of these yeah. 10 teams. So the biggest thing is, like, I don't know that there's actually going to be a winner of the, the game event. Uh, there will be winners of the skill challenges based on individual, and I think there's one team relay. Um, so there might be winners of that, but from my understanding, there won't be full winners of the actual tournament. It's more so just getting the girls the experience to play the game of football and try and gauge where the interest is at in the state of Wisconsin so that we can see if we can move forward with it. No, that's, thank you for sharing. I actually, I didn't know that, so no, thank you yeah, for Yeah, I mean, I that. could be wrong too. We might be a winner and <laughs> hopefully we are that, um, but I would say like if, if we're trying to do, go and win, 
which in our head, like that's what we're going into it as. Um, just being disciplined and, and staying quick. Uh, from my understanding, the clock is running the entire uh, until the last two minutes of the game, so it's going to go by pretty quickly. So just getting um, disciplined and being quick with the ball. And then it's two 12-minute halves, I read, yep. and then two-minute warnings yep. at, at the end of each half. So yeah. 24 minutes total and then 20 minutes of just regular game clock time where yeah. the clock's pretty much running constantly and then those last two minutes where yeah. you have some stoppages. So. Yep, and I think these rules are going to play into place. So I think the more we know the rules and the more we execute the correct way to follow the rules, I think that'll play into it because the rules are a little bit different than regular flag football. Yeah, I, one rule that was interesting to me was the two-point conversion is actually further away yep. than the extra point. You yep. do, Obviously, something you don't see in the professional sports. Yeah, we were actually that's just, just weird. Yeah, we were just practicing that today, and of course, the girls want to go for the two point every time. So <laughs> we'll see what happens. It makes it a little tougher <laughs> from the ten yard line. Yeah, but that, we should that'll be, be right, a unique. Though. That, that's a unique kind of interesting yeah. rule to, to experiment. I, I'll be interested to see how that plays out. Yeah. As a kicker, it kind of hurts, though. I want to kick the ball, but <laughs> we'll see how it goes. Yeah, no, for sure. But uh, I know, Chelsea, there can be a maximum of 25 players who can play, right? Girls, yep, and then a minimum of 11, which is, I think, pretty much any football team. You have to yep. have 11 yep. players to kind of compete. Yep. Um, so it's six on six, and then, yep, minimum of 11, and then max of 25. And then how many are going to be for playing for Sun Prairie West, or do you not know how many you're bringing to um, Green Bay there's a couple factors playing into place because we have a lot of girls playing uh, soccer, softball. We have our quarterback playing baseball and then track. So we're conflicting with a lot of the other sports since this isn't a, a sanctioned sport yet. So we're running into conflicts. Um, we do have a max roster of 25, so we're filled. Um, but it's kind of up in the air if a handful of them can make it or not. But because we want them to experience the game of football, we're giving them the opportunity to still practice with us and then hope we can make it work at the end. Yeah, no, thank you for sharing. Yeah. And uh, Luciana Morena, I, I'm interested with her. She's going to be a starting quarterback for you guys. She said yep. she had never thrown a football. I was reading nope. that. And what, what? she looks like she's thrown it her whole life. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's incredible. Yep. That's remarkable. And I know she's going to play baseball yep. as well this spring. So uh, for the boys team, is she going to be then Yep. So playing? she's currently in tryouts with the boys team for baseball. And then we also have Antonique Austin, um, who you might recognize from the basketball team. She also played tackle football with us, and she's played football for a long time and for life. So those will be our two quarterbacks, and I'm hoping to get them both in the game at the same time and kind of mix it up and make the defense uh, respect where we, what we do with the ball. I'd be interested to see both of the, how yep. both of them do. And uh, Luciana Moreno, I mean, like I say, that's a remarkable story. Yeah. Never throwing a football before in her life, and yeah, now she's, she's being – She's good. You can tell. Like, she's got it. Yep. No, that that's that's really cool. Yeah. So um, it's exciting for sure. Are you is that maybe a person you're kind of most excited to see in these events? Just kind of see how she does and I mean grows, honestly, or, I'm, a, I'm excited for all everybody. of them. Yeah, just like the biggest thing is like this is an opportunity that I wish that I had as a as a young woman. Um, I was personally told I couldn't play football, flag or tackle. Like flag wasn't huge back when I was growing up, um, but tackle specifically, I was told I couldn't play. So just uh, being able to be a part of giving the, these girls an opportunity that I always like hoped for, or wished for, um, is really cool. So I'm honestly excited to see all of them and really I, I, I'm excited to see the ones who aren't um, regular athletes a lot of them don't play other sports or not a lot of a good handful of them don't play other sports so we have a w very wide range of talent so we have um, athletes that play multiple sports and then we have a couple that have never played uh, sports ever so it's kind of cool to see them progress and then see how they do on the field yeah for sure so um, is there any teams in this event that you're kind of are you? I know you don't. You said you don't know much about these teams, but any teams that you think um, are going to be like, if this were a competition, let's say, would would be an obstacle challenge like um, teams. I'm kind of event. like stereotyping, but I would say Milwaukee, just because it's a bigger city. They're going to obviously have big, uh, more athletes than we might have. So I would say that one sticks out in my mind. Any of the Milwaukee schools? Yeah. No, yeah. I think no. That's probably true. So. Yeah. Um, but I want to share, this is, I think, really important. What ways can members of the Sun Prairie community um, support this event? And are they are people in this community able to like come to this event, kind of be spectators and watch? Yep. Um, and 
you know, what, what are all different ways that they can kind of support? I know one way is you have like a donation thing that I know you have um, on social media that yep. you're sharing um, where people can donate. Yep, so um, if they reach out to me um, through my Sun Prairie Schools uh, email, I can always help and see how they want to support. Uh, we're, we're pretty set on uh, donations and support right now. We got our bus booked and I have a lot of, I'm trying to make this at no cost for the girls and we're pretty much set on that. Um, and then I guess as far as going to the event, uh, it's open to the public at no cost. Opens to the public at 12.40 p.m., which is right before we start the Skills Challenge. And it's at the Don H Hudson Center in Green Bay. So it's the indoor f uh, practice facility for the Packers. Well, thank you for sharing. And for anyone in the Sun Prairie community, definitely donate if you can. Yep. Uh, it's a big thing. So um, I guess what I know the WIA, there'll be some members there, um, representatives there, that'll be at this event. Um, Hopefully. What, what, I was told they were invited. I don't or know for sure, or you're if, not they're sure confirmed. if they're coming. I haven't confirmed, so I don't want to say anything wrong, but they were definitely invited, and this is to gauge the interest to show them whether it's there or not to get this started in Wisconsin. And I would say after speaking with uh, the Packers representative um, who's kind of leading this, uh, the first day that we had 25 schools registered for the event, so I don't think they expected it to blow up as much as it did. And what do you think it'll take with this event specifically to, to maybe open the minds even more and maybe get greater conversations about making uh, girls play football a sanctioned sport uh, I, in Wisconsin? I think it just needs uh, a couple people to actually take lead and want to invest in and do this. Um, I'd say there's a, a lot of people that are probably hesitant just because girls in football is not normal in, in today's society. I mean, it's growing, it's getting better, but... I think just if we get a good amount of people that are willing to fight and make this happen, I think we can make it happen. Yeah, I think just more people that are going to come out and support these events. And yep, and then uh, there's, I think I believe, don't quote me on this, but there's eight other states that have girls flag football as high school sports already. Uh, specifically, New York is in their third season. So, And then we also have um, an opportunity for girls to get scholarships. So that's the biggest thing. Uh, that I personally love pushing for because it's just another opportunity to get these girls to go to college and have the opportunity to play flag football at the collegiate level. Yeah, no, that's awesome. And actually, I know you're, I'm 100% sure you're right. I was watching the video beforehand. So it was eight schools. It was eight, or okay, eight cool. states. It was yeah. eight states yeah. that have uh, girls flag football already sanctioned yep. as sports. So, um, and, and know, Texas uh, and New York, I know, are two of them. Yep, Texas, Texas and New York are two states that I've been involved with a little bit. Um, I lived in New York prior to Wisconsin and uh, worked for the Women's Gridiron Foundation, and we helped um, leagues in the in the state get clinics going and get the interest going. And then uh, they started out with youth leagues and then got to the high school. Yeah. So no, thank you for sharing. And yeah. um, I want to get next to actually talking about the skills competition part mm. and the different drills or different stations. So they're, they're weird, and I don't know a lot about them, but we still got to work on them. Uh, there's a couple weird ones, a couple normal that you could guess. Like I think the longest throw, the fastest girl, and then there's a couple weird like obstacles. Yep, the medicine so, ball yeah, ladder, that, that's player one. I guess that is one that. is the weird one to me. You gotta put a medicine ball in buckets. Yep, so, yep, looks like you run to the first medicine ball, which is six pounds, and then you yeah. put it in the red bucket, and then you run to grab the eight pound medicine ball and put it in the blue bucket. And then yeah. you have to run to the 10 pound um, medicine ball, put it in the yellow bucket, and then you run to yeah. the throwing lane, and then you have a five, looks like a five yard window to, th to th well, yeah, five yard uh, window to throw, yeah. and he has to go at least five yards. So this is where I'm kind of struggling is these weird uh, challenges. We should obviously practice them before, but there's so much to teach in the game of football with these girls who have never played before, so we haven't focused on the challenges yet. But I think we'll, we're going to start getting there this week. So. But yeah, there's a lot. I don't know, there's there a are. lot of intricacies to these, and yeah, and we might the be winging drill. We might be winging those, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see what happens. <laughs> but yeah, I'm trying to see three cone drill, pop up weave is another drill. Yeah. Uh, raised running ropes, um, agility gauntlet. Yeah. And then the last one uh, is the hail mary. Yep. Yeah. So I think. Uh, 
a biggest the biggest thing as my guess is they're running this because um, they did initially invite the NAIA coaches and then the JUCO colleges coach uh, coaches to this event. Unfortunately, they are all in the thick of their own flag season for college. Um, but I do know personally a couple of coaches who are asking for film. So my guess is to see their athleticism in these uh, skill challenges because there is an opportunity for some of our girls to potentially get recruited for flag football at the collegiate level. Because it's so new as a sport, um, those coaches only look for athletes and potential. So that's kind of cool. Yeah, that is cool. And uh, I would think probably a player that probably would want to do the Hail Mary drill, I get my guessing either, Luciano would probably want to be the quarterback gonna, or yeah, Antoinique. It's going to be them. a fight between the two, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> They're going to probably fight yep. for that quarterback. Yeah, probably. And, uh, I could see Nevea Jackson being a good receiver. Uh, Nevea can actually throw as well. She can yes. too throw. Yep, Nevea and then Tanaya, um, she was on JV basketball team this year. All of them, um, shot, like they all can catch, they can all can throw. So we should have some good weapons and hopefully we can use them in the right places. Well, we'll see who wants to fight for, yeah. the, who wants to do and these then different Micaiah, drills. And then Micaiah, Hawk too. Both, yes. sis, both Hawk sisters are playing for us. Uh, Micaiah specifically, my guess is she'll tower over everybody else and be tall and be able to intercept the ball and then as well catch it on as receiver. So I'm excited to see all of them in play. Yeah, that'll be cool. And yeah, yeah. Micaiah Hawk, I could see her being a, a yeah. tall body receiver that yep. just catch and passes. Then, and same with Mackenzie, they're, they're both tall. Yep. And then we also have um, Marie Outlay. So I don't at uh, the basketball games for West. It, if you've ever been to one of them, they always call Antonique QB one, and then uh, Marie Outlay wide receiver one. So. To have both of them on the team, is, is, I'm excited. To see how I, I it think plays I, out. I have heard that expression yeah, before. Yeah. The QB one for she really does uh, look like Antonique a QB out there on she, the basketball court. So and then it, uh, Marie is that yep. wide receiver one. And they yeah. they kind of are like that. Yep, and they can uh, rotate. Like Marie can be QB one too, yeah. and wide receiver one for Ant. So we'll see how it plays out. I'm excited. A lot of a lot of great athletes mm -hmm. and players on, uh, that are yeah. on the Sunbury West girls yeah. play football team. It sounds like to yep, me, there's going to be a lot of a lot of competition for a lot of spots. So. Absolutely. Um, but what are what are you kind of most excited about though with this event in particular? I uh, mean, just being a part of history and uh, being able to be a part of an opportunity that I almost dreamed of as a kid. So it's, I mean, it's just great to see this actually growing and uh, specifically in the Midwest because we're a little bit behind with the other states. But I'm excited that it's actually going through. And how many practices do you guys have a week? Do you mm. practice every like all weekdays, like a five so like a five day schedule during the week? Or we started out one day a week, and then I found that we had too many conflicts with the other sports. So then I offered two days a week. Um, so the interesting thing is we have yet to have a practice with our full team there because of all these other conflicts with other sports. Um, so we went from one day a week to two days a week, and then right now we're on spring break, so we're going every day. Um, so trying to crunch time last minute so we're going every day this week and then probably every day next week before the event okay sounds good no I, I was just curious about that kind of yeah it's but been that, tough yeah I could see I mean that would be it's I can believe it's challenging with all yeah. the the other conflicts that yep. you know you never with different really sports know. and yeah you never really know who you're gonna get so for and that music practice. too I mean can be another thing you yep. know some people are in I don't know different music stuff so yep, definitely I, I kind of remember that from playing days when yep. I was in high school so. well that's one of my favorite things about football though is you you bring together such a wide variety of people it's the most challenging piece and the the most exciting piece in my opinion because you got girls that were we're trying to get to work together as a team uh, girls they normally wouldn't talk to or hang out with so it's kind of cool to see that starting to to develop um, and actually on Thursday we have the Army National Guard coming to do team bonding for the girls uh, to try and get this more as a uh, team uh, atmosphere. That's pretty cool. Yeah. The Army National Guard joining yep. the practices to kind of get a team bonding experience. Yep. No, that's cool. So um, what are your thoughts on three officials? Because I know is usu mm -hmm. usually there's four, right? Or typically, or is there two? I, I don't know specifically for flag. Or for, That's actually or for a good regular question. football, I'm thinking four. Isn't it normally four for? Well, now that you're asking me, I'm drawing a blank, but <laughs> I feel like it is four. Yeah, that sounds likely. Don't quote me on that. <laughs> but yeah, I, the refs, I feel like they have a hard job because these rules are different, in my opinion. 
and yeah. it'll, it'll be pretty difficult, especially with the multiple handoffs and trying to follow that. It'll be pretty difficult for them, I would think. I would think it would be nice to have a, four, a fourth mm -hmm. official, but. Yeah, just another set of eyes. But I know it probably costs more money to have more oh, WIA sure. officials, yeah. and I'm yeah. sure that's probably the, big, well, <laughs> the biggest probably, obstacle. They're probably studying these rules just like I am. <laughs> right, exactly. So, um, but uh, the attire for the event, so you have team uniforms that are provided by Nike. Those are really nice, by yeah. the way. Those. They're pretty sharp. Uh, so we had uh, the Packers team up with an organization who sent us free Nike uh, uniforms, and they look pretty good. Yeah, they look nice. And then football cleats, no metal, obviously. Yep. Or so we're probably. still working on the cleats. That's kind of our last expense uh, to get for the girls. A lot of them don't have them. A couple of them do because they play soccer. So we'll see. We're hoping to get everyone in cleats, but if not, there might be a couple in tennis shoes. Because, yeah, I mean, I, just with flag football, I would see you would not want to have metal cleats. In, no, in they won't football. allow it at all because you could hurt somebody. Yeah, on, yeah, I would feel like you could really hurt somebody without yeah. proper padding. Yeah, yeah, for that sure. would be dangerous. Yeah. <laughs> it just sounds dangerous. So Yeah, but even playing in tennis shoes, too, it gets a little iffy because you start to slide on the turf. So we're hoping to get everyone cleats, but we'll see. Because yeah. obviously we're not going to try and make them buy cleats for a one-time event if right. this doesn't go through. So No, makes sense. So yeah. And then a mouth guard has to be worn by all players. It was a rule yep. I saw. Um, and then football gloves are optional, and then no helmet, which I would expect, you know, yeah. just because. So we actually got um, mouth guards and um, footballs and gloves donated to us from the from BSN Sports. So that was really awesome. So all the girls will go and have matching gloves, which will be pretty cool. No, oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Well, that's great that they were able to do that. And then yep. no jewelry and no hats. Yep, that's normal which is for normal. any sport. Right, yep, yep for any sport. Yeah, yep. That's well, and they kind of took most of the contact out of here, so um, the helmets is iffy based on fl uh, flag football. A lot of these flag football or seven-on-seven -seven leagues are starting to add, like, the soft helmets, but we specifically for this event don't have to do that, which, which I'm sure the girls more like. comfortable. <laughs> it's, I'm sure it's more comfortable. Yeah, uh, yeah, and the girls will probably be worried about their hair, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, well, again, with Phoebe Schrechter, how cool is it that she was able to – make it to this event, you know, take some time out to be a guest speaker. Because, I mean, that's pretty cool that she yeah, was able to do that. It's amazing. Um, just her experience throughout the game. And we actually kind of crossed paths when I when I played tackle football. She We had a tournament out in um, uh, UK, in Europe. Um, so we kind of crossed paths back then. And uh, she was just on my list of suggestions for them. And they ended up getting her to come. So it's pretty awesome. She's got a lot of involvement not only previously coaching with the um, Buffalo Bills, but then just being an ambassador for NFL flag. So it's pretty awesome. Yeah. And I don't know that the girls fully understand who's about to speak to them, but it'll be pretty cool to see it and see what she has to say. Yeah, no, I think that'll be super cool what yeah. she has to say. And yep. uh, I'm wondering if Jennifer King will be somebody who maybe might be a guest speaker in future years. So that was actually on my list of suggestions. Um, that's actually my former teammate. So we won a national and international championship together. Um, however, Jennifer King is more uh, tackle focused, more NFL, uh, but whereas Phoebe has gotten a mo a more involvement in uh, flag football specifically. So, but either one, amazing people, amazing leaders, and just good representations of women in sports. Yeah, no, absolutely. So, we'll see. Maybe, like I say, maybe Jennifer King will be somebody in future yeah, seasons definitely. that they bring to this event to be a guest speaker. Absolutely. So who knows? I think so. she was number two on my list. So. Definitely. Um, but anyway, kind of what what do you think needs to be done more with football to give more women opportunities? Because I know there's still, I think, is a lot of limitations and mm -hmm. opportunities that women get in football, mm -hmm. um, both at the professional, you know, and then high school and college levels, too. So really at all levels. Yeah. Um, but I mean, there's been progress been made, which has been great. But what, what do you think still needs to be done to even get it to a better place than where it is now. I think it just starts with an open mind, um, just having an open mind and not closing uh, closing women out of out of it. Um, the thing that I run into most is that people try and second guess knowledge and even even still, like if I don't know something, I'm, I feel like I'm a true student of the game and I'm trying to learn it. So if I don't know something, I'm not gonna pretend like I do. And I guess just keeping that open mind, like we're really trying to be here and be good 
like a good addition to the game. Um, I think we add a, pr a different perspective. So I think it all starts with an open mind and just being willing to have that conversation with a female trying to get into the game of football. And hopefully one day we aren't uh, recognized as a female in football and we're just recognized as a coach. Yes. Or whatever role that we're trying to get into. Yeah, no, I think that's great to share. And um, yeah, I mean, you, I mean, with anything in life, you should have an open mind. Yeah, I mean, I think absolutely. that's, I think that's key in any parts a, of life. Unfortunately, a lot of people don't. Though, so <laughs> that's true, but <laughs> yeah, I, I think it's always good to keep an open mind. Yep, and I think just a lot of people don't understand that, like, when women want to get involved in something, they're really truly trying to learn it and add something positive to the organization. As far as like, they're not trying to step in there and act like they know everything. We're really trying to learn and be a part of something awesome. Yeah, no, and I, that's a great thing is, yeah, yeah you don't want to come in and just be like, act like a know-it-all. Yeah. I mean, regardless of male or female, I, I yeah. think it's not good to be like 100%. that. You yeah. you're always can learn. You can always yeah. get better at things, know more. And yeah, that's one of the things that was drilled into me as a coach is just never stop learning. And that's something I always like, I, I never will know everything. So, and that's like the game of football and any, any sport really is always going to be transitioning over time. So just keeping up with it. And I was actually going to ask you next kind of what had drew you to, you know, coaching football and kind of when did maybe your passion and um, interest kind of start, you know, with thinking about coaching football and maybe being just involved in football in general? Yeah, so um, I have a brother and my father also. So my brother played football, my father coached. Um, but throughout my life, it was kind of, it was just known that it was a, a boy's sport, a man's sport. So I never really questioned it till I got about high school age. Then I, I uh, kind of took interest in football a little bit more and wanted to play, but it wasn't like I was told no and so was another classmate of mine, so we weren't allowed to. Um, and then when I was 18, I had moved from Appleton to Madison to go to Madison College, and I was working at a store, and somebody came in with a flyer, and I thought it was guys. I was like, oh, let me go check out this guy's football team, um, see, what, see what they're about. And she kind of gave me like a disgusted look, and I was like, no, it's women's football. And I was like, what? I've never heard of that. So I went to the next practice, fell in love, never turned back. Um, so I played for about 12 years and then COVID hit. And COVID kind of made me transition into more of the coaching role. So I had always coached um, throughout my playing experience. I coached like random clinics here and there with my teammates. And then um, I started coaching clinics uh, with the XFL at uh, MetLife, MetLife Stadium. They have a little um, turf field outside the stadium. Started doing that and then once COVID hit, it canceled our tackle season. So I kind of started being more, more student of the game, more coaching route. And then once I moved from New York back to Wisconsin, I just kind of dove right into the coaching. So that's a pretty in unique journey. Yeah. <laughs> and pretty interesting how, you know, when you were 18 and you started at Madison College, you. Yeah. Once you got there and you found out about this flyer, you know, yep. kind of a flyer at school. and Yeah, so I had played soccer my whole life, so I was used to being a part of organized sports. So I was kind of like in a moment in my life where I was a little bit lost, like didn't really know what to do without that. Um, and this, ha this happened to come along across my path and definitely fell in love that first practice and just never looked back. That's pretty cool, just yeah. kind of how that all worked out for yeah. you. So that's awesome. Yeah. Um, and then kind of, what were, were you involved in athletics a lot when you were in high school too and kind of what were some sports that you kind of were part of when you were in high school? So um, well I grew up playing softball and basketball and soccer. Um, once I hit high school I kind of went uh, solely focused on soccer so I did soccer all year round. Um, I kind of ran into a situation in my life where I ended up quitting high school soccer and only played club and kind of had to do with coaches so that's kind of a drive that I have as a, a coach myself is just trying to be a positive role model in, in uh, whether it's girls or boys, just being a positive role model as a coach. So it kind of drives me to do that. Um, but soccer was definitely my main sport. And I would say it helped me a lot transitioning from soccer to football because of like the footwork. And I've actually noticed that with these flag girls, the soccer players, it comes a lot more naturally to them. 
So it's kind of cool to see. That is cool. And yeah. I, I could see how that footwork would translate yep. from soccer to football for sure. Yeah, so. and they definitely run the route to a whole lot better because of the footwork. So yeah. it's kind of cool. No, that's awesome. And I can I can believe that for sure. Yeah. So um, let's see, kind of, I guess if we, if you want to talk more about some of the, I know kind of, I, I wrote a lot about these different drills. I, I know maybe some of the, the rules. Challenges. Yeah, or yeah. some of the rules more. Maybe I get into I some mean, of the rules I mean, we could talk about it, for, yeah. I just might not um, memorize them. I know maybe. there's some interesting rules with running. Um, one, yep. One was oh, only direct handoffs. I thought that was a really interesting yeah. thing. So no pitches and no. Yeah, so um, I used to work at West Point, the military academy. So I had like a front row seat to the Army football. Um, so I lived with a couple of the football coaches. They were obviously run triple option. So had they not had that rule, I was about to run a triple option type offense. So that kind of sucked the fun out of it for me. Because <laughs> um, I think, I mean, that makes it really challenging if you can pitch it or uh, do lateral passes. Yeah, no, I. it's too bad that yeah. the intricacies there are kind of lost in that rule. But. Yeah, we would have been really dangerous uh, or more dangerous than we're gonna be with Lucy and uh, Anthony if we had, were able to do the lateral passes and pitches. I guess I, I understand though, just from a perspective of, you know, with flag football, it'd be so hard defensively to stop. Yeah, well, I mean, normal, from my understanding, normal flag football rules allow that. So I think maybe they're just trying to introduce the girls to this game, so they're kind of taking away some of that so that it's not crazy offensive focus, but it's interesting trying to run offense without being able to do, or motions is the other one that really sticks out, motions and the lateral passes. That is, that is yeah. though pretty unique that yeah. neither of those are options, but like you said, maybe as this event goes on more, maybe these rules will change a little yeah. bit too, it's kind of like well, you I said. Th I think they'll change if it becomes a sanctioned sport, but we'll see, maybe not. Yeah, we'll see. Uh, if, if it comes a sanctioned sport, we'll see if they make you different rules or change. When, when it becomes yes, a sanctioned sport. Yes, when, when yeah. it becomes We're a sanctioned sport. We're going to speak it into existence. Yeah, we, we'll, we'll speak it into existence here <laughs> on Mark Madness Sports. But uh, for receivers, um, I guess an interesting rule there is all players are eligible to receive a pass. So yep. offensive linemen, um, yep. quarterbacks, Quarterback. I mean, well, I mean, in the NFL, you, I guess you can kind of do that too if you pitch it, and then you yeah. you get the quarterback and run for a route. But um, yeah, it does make it a little interesting. We don't necessarily have a whole lot of like linemen. Some of them, like depending on the formation, we'll have a couple of lineup like they look like they're linemen, but there's not a whole lot of that. Um, but it, it definitely makes it interesting and makes it hard on defense. I'll say that because you got to stay true to the players all over the field because they could get a pass at any moment. So. That's pretty cool that all six players can yeah. receive a pass at any given point. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and then there's no diving with running with the ball, I guess. That's kind of sad. Too bad, <laughs> but. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then blocking, obvious, or blocking so just without contact. That one's weird is interesting. to me, I can't lie. Um, because of tackle, like, this has been a transition in itself, but the, the blocking seems to be more similar to, like, basketball and picks. Um, so you have so the one thing we're running into is I have a lot of basketball girls and they put their arms up like that to, and that's not allowed I guess so you have to put your arms behind your back or to the side in order to block and it can't be I believe it says you can't be uh, no moving blocks or moving shifts so it's been a challenge trying to teach that piece of it yeah but. that seems like that would be really hard without yeah. without movement yeah. That seems really tricky. So. And I would say the refs are going to struggle a little bit on that one, too. Yeah, I know. I'd agree. <laughs> I know so. I would. <laughs> but, yeah, it's weird that you can't have, like, even your hands up like that. Like Even, like, in basketball where you'd have it, your arms crossed like that. That's yep. weird that some even that isn't allowed. Some of the girls asked today, can we just tell the refs that we're basketball players <laughs> and this is what we're used to? And I was like, well, we could try, but I don't know. <laughs> That's funny. Because <but laughs> that's what they've been taught right. their whole life. Right. So exactly. it would be interesting, that's for sure. Yeah, no, for sure. And uh, on defense, I know no bump and run coverage, which. Yeah, no contact. Yeah, no, and no contact. If there's no contact, that makes sense. Yeah. Um, defenders not rushing the quarterback can be lined up two yards off the line of scrimmage. Yep. And then the rusher has to start at seven yards. Yep, at least seven yards, which is kind of interesting that they have to stand that way that far back. Yeah. Yeah, it is, but it helps us a little bit um, until we get a really fast girl, which I know I'm sure some of these teams have. So that's, we've been working on that specifically this week to get our quarterbacks used to having people rushing 
and uh, come in their face to try and screw up the pass. And uh, I know some of the penalties are pretty similar to um, regular football, I guess. Kind of the biggest one I, that's kind of different is pass interference just being five yards instead of 15 yep. in the NFL. That's kind of an, an interesting one. Yeah. I'm kind of surprised about guarding. I'm kind of surprised about the unnecessary roughness and the unsportsmanlike conduct that it's only 10 yards. I'm a little surprised. We might get a couple of those. A lot of my girls <laughs> run like they're about to tackle them instead of grab the flag. So I honestly wish we were doing tackle, but we might get a couple of those on accident. And then the flag guarding, a lot of these girls want a stiff arm. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know where they're getting it from, but that was my signature move, so I can't be mad at it, but we, we got to stop trying to do that. So that'll be interesting between the two of those. Yeah, those will be. And <laughs> I, I guess it's good then that it's only 10 yards in automatic yeah. first down or five yeah. yards Hopefully instead of 15. Hopefully we don't, but we'll see. I but, feel like we might accidentally get one at least. But I am a little surprised that those – that the last two aren't 15 yards instead of 10. That's kind of surprising. My, my guess is because we're only starting from the 30-yard line, so we're not playing a full field. So my guess is that if you did that, you'd be halfway to the end zone already. Yeah. So that's my guess on why they did that. So. No, that makes sense. I guess, yeah. I guess that makes sense now knowing that yeah. it's a shorter field. So. Yep. And some of the girls are, are a little disappointed that we aren't playing full field, so I found that kind of funny. That is funny. Yeah. Um, but – Interceptions, it's interesting, are worth mm -hmm. three points and change of possession. Yep. So that's kind of a unique rule, That's which is pretty cool. That, those points are going to add up real quick, though, too. So if you get a lot of interceptions, yep. it, it so, really helps. Yep, I'm relying on Micaiah and her, her height for that one. <laughs> yes, no, definitely. And uh, so change of possession restarts the offense on the 30-yard line. Yep. And then possession is determined by a coin toss, which I think that's the same. Normal. In, yeah, yep. normal and in, in regular football as well. Um, and then I, I know there's four downs to make a first down at the 15 yard line, and then there's just four additional downs yep. then to score from there. So I guess you get yeah. like, you can get as many as eight downs. Yep. I think it will be a pretty high scoring event in my, at least from what I see so far, especially at our practices, our offense is scoring a lot. Um, and I think just because of the short field, and then you only have two series really. And then no you contact. Do it right. Yeah. Yeah. There's, I think there's going to be a lot of scoring yeah. too. So. It'll be interesting to see kind of how, how it plays out in the way of scoring mm -hmm. for this event, for sure. Yeah. Um, but the skills competition, I guess getting back to that, um, kind of what do you think with if Lucia or Luciana and uh, Antoinique, if they get to do the longest throw challenge, how far do you think their, mm. what would you say you think their maximum distance throwing Ooh. has been at least since you've seen it practice? I don't even know if I have a guess. It kind of depends on the day. I mean, obviously, yesterday we had wind, so that kind of played into it. Um, I, it's hard. It, it, could be, it could be pretty far. I mean, maybe 30, 40 yards? I don't know. I feel like I'm bad at that. But I'm going to say Lucy might have a little bit more just because of baseball. Um, she might have a little bit more power, but then Antonique also has played football for a while, and she's QB1 on the basketball court. So I'll definitely be curious. I might have to make that a challenge in practice and see how it turns out. <laughs> that, that'll be happens. interesting to see if, if you make that a challenge yeah. in practice, how far they yeah. can throw it. Because I, I think for myself, I've tested before how far I can throw. It's about 35 yards yeah. for me. Yeah, That's th about th my I maximum. I, I'm going to give them credit and say they can go further, but. They could probably well, throw yeah. it beyond what I can. I, they, they've <laughs> got some arms, and I think a lot of these girls actually could. Uh, there's like some some girls that have thrown spirals, and you wouldn't even really expect it. So and when it's I thrown awesome. 35 yards, I I thought you know I thought well, that seemed like a decent tall like yeah. throw. But so thinking that you know throwing beyond that is yeah. it's impressive. I think, we, I think we can do it. But I'm sure your team can do it. Yeah. I definitely yeah. believe your we team. We have some impressive girls. So. Probably 45 yards. Yeah. That probably is probably about. I'll have to report back to you. It, I, I think would I'll be my guess. Would be my guess. About yeah. 45 yards is yeah. going to be my guess. But I bet they can throw it. I bet 45 you. yards. I maybe agree. close to 50, maybe even. Hey, we might just be scoring touchdowns from the 30 yard line. So we'll <laughs> that, see. What that happens. would be pretty cool. So we might have actually done that today. Lucy might have thrown a touchdown from the start. That's and, really cool. Yeah. That's so, awesome. Yeah. Um, but touchdowns are worth six points as well. Yep. Uh, just like in regular football. Um, and then, yep, the extra point is from the five-yard line, the two-point conversion from the 10-yard line. Which we're always going for two if we're listening to the girls. <laughs> the girls, they always want to go for two. <laughs> yep. And that's, you know, you'd expect that. Yep. You'd expect that they'd always want to do that. And, yeah, definitely. 
get those extra points. I mean, yeah. like you the kinda... five yard line is too close. We got the ten, <laughs> so we'll see. I like the confidence. But the no flag guarding is that something in practice that you're definitely wanting I mean, to emphasis a little bit? Just... A little bit. Uh, there's a good amount of girls that have some crazy hip movements already. So like spin move helps um, a lot of like. It's like hip dipping, so you get low, so you, it's harder to grab the flag, or just um, like stepping back. It's a lot of hip movement that I personally, like I would struggle with a little bit, but some of these girls already have it down with just naturally, so it, I think we'll be all right without the flag guarding. Um, we've been working on moving the hips more than using the hands, so we should be all right. And something I saw on the NFL flag uh, site on Facebook was a drill called the centipede drill. Have you heard of that before? So we run a, a variation of that. Um, I actually just saw that as well. I think it's a little different than what we run, but I, from my understanding, they start on opposite ends and then meet in the middle. That's what yeah. it looked like, yeah, so when I watched it. we ran that drill in tryouts to start. So we run that uh, kind of often. So you go one-on-one, -on -one, uh, defense versus offense, and they have to make a move on the defense and try and get around them. So it's a, it's a great drill, and it's fun to watch them, and I think the girls have fun doing it too. Yeah, that seems like a pretty unique yeah. drill for sure. Yeah, it was kind of exciting when I saw uh, the NFL posting it, and I was like, hey, we run that. <laughs> so it's kind of cool. But some of your opponents, let me kind of look at that here. So your first opponent will be at 2.35 p.m. Yep. And you'll take on Clintonville. Yep. Uh, what kind of, I don't know if you know anything about Clintonville or is it just going to be kind of? I think it's of... small town. I think we're just going to go and play our game while we practice and see what happens. And then and this... hope that we can uh, out, outwork them. That's really what, what it comes down to. And then the second matchup is Clayton at 310, and then the last matchup will be Rufus King at 420. Yep. So that last one should be really interesting yeah, seeing a Milwaukee school. Yeah, that's the one I'm worried about because of Milwaukee. They might, have, they might come stacked with athletes, but I think we're also stacked with athletes, so I think we'll put up a good fight. So, I mean, kind of I mean, obviously your hope your girls can go 3-0 yeah, and in these yeah, games. Yeah, I but think we can. I have confidence that we can do it. But, yeah, I believe yeah. your team can. And yeah, even if your sure. team – I think you'd have to feel pretty good if your team comes away with two and one. Oh, you know, yeah. Just comes away with a winning yeah, record. Yeah. We'll come out we'll come out with three and zero. Oh. But three yeah. and zero, oh, we'll, yeah. we'll we'll we'll, we'll make it into for. existence here. Yeah. Yeah. So, we got it. Uh, you guys got it. So yeah, I think our athletes will uh, definitely put themselves in positions to shine. So yeah, I think we'll ball out. No, I I agree. I I believe in your team. Yeah. So well, um, we appreciate that. <laughs> But uh, anyway, I guess I want to go back through the itinerary a little bit. So your team's going to get to Green Bay at 9 a.m. in the yep, morning. On, bright and early. On, on, yeah. the Saturday, on a Saturday. So yep. bright and early on a Saturday. Um, so you start at 9 with that, and then um, they'll get to meet Phoebe Schrechter pretty much early on, and that, that'll be her, her guest speaking will yep. be kind of the beginning, one of the yeah. beginning things there. Which I think is good. She'll bring some good energy for the entire event. So And then they'll get to have a little bit more fun of uh, – Touring the Hall of Fame and yeah. Lambeau Field, the stadium tours, yeah. then at 9.50. And then after that, you meet back for lunch, it looks like. Yeah. I'm and hoping they have some Packer players secretly come say hi. That would we'll be cool. That would be cool. <laughs> Maybe, uh, well, Aaron Rodgers yeah, may not be there. Well, no, I don't think you'll see him. him. He can go. <laughs> I, don't think, I don't think you'll be seeing Aaron <laughs> nope, Rodgers at all. I don't want all. to anyways. <laughs> uh, but uh, trying to think of some player, Jordan Love might be, you know, he I might. I mean, we'll take anyone. <laughs> it would just, it would be cool. Just Romeo be Dobbs or yeah. maybe uh, Christian Watson. Yep. I think it would be awesome if we see any of them just give us recognition for uh, just participating in this event. So it would be awesome. Yeah, that would be super cool. Well, yeah. you'll have to report back if, you, if yeah, any of the Packers definitely. actually come and stop yeah. by for that. So, yeah. but then maybe, maybe they'll listen to this and take it as a hint. We'll yes, see. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll see. We'll see. But maybe, or maybe meet everyone at lunch you know yeah, there you go be, be there yeah. for lunch so yeah. uh, i wonder do you know what possibly might be there for lunch or no, you have no but idea everybody keeps asking me i have no idea <laughs> i would my guess is because i had a friend who used to work for the packers and he was fed pretty well my guess is it's going to be fine but the girls are a little worried about that one <laughs> the girls like, it are better be better it better be better than the school lunch and I was, I keep telling him, I would think that the Packers would have better lunch than the school, but we'll see what happens. Yeah, I would, I we're, would uh, anticipate that. For we're sure. coming stocked with uh, snacks just in case, so <laughs> we'll be right. <laughs> coming, coming prepared for snacks yeah. in case, but yeah. I bet the lunch will be pretty good. Yeah. So, and then at twelve twenty, uh, the Packers female staff Q and A panel. Yep, that would be pretty cool. Which will be, I think, should be really interesting. Yep, and cool. They, they just hired their first uh, female athletic trainer. 
I believe. Yes. Uh, so that's been in the news lately, so that'd be cool. I'm assuming she'll be there, so. I think she went to Madison or UW yep. Madison, yep, I think. Yeah, she did, yeah. I think her name's Erin? I don't know, that, don't quote me on that. Yeah, that don't one quote I don't me on know. That. But it, I think it's just, I mean, one I hope is, it gets to the point where that's not newsworthy anymore, but it will be cool to hear from some of the female staff that worked there and how they got there. But so, that's really cool, so. Yeah. Um, so that'll be at 1220, and then the teams will transition to the Don Hudson Center at 1240. Yep. Um, and then they'll be at the Don Hudson Center the, re the rest of the time. Yep. Um, and then 1250 player warm-ups, and then 1255, then the skills competition, the team skills challenge. And then 2 o'clock, then the b exhibition games begin, and yep. the three games that each team gets to play. So. Yep, so it, it opens to the public at 1240, and then the rest is open for everybody to come watch at no cost. So I think any support we can get would be awesome. Yeah, hopefully a lot of yeah. people turn out from the Sun Prairie community. Yeah. And yeah, and I think that will play into, if there are WIAA people there, representatives there, I think that will play into it if we can get a, a good crowd cheering us on. So Yeah, I would cool. say maybe... It, I mean, it'd be great if you could get like, I don't know, 200 people. Yeah, that would be awesome. I but, think between the schools, we can probably get that, but we'll see what happens. I mean, you'd like to get, yeah. I mean, I'm sure you'd like to see at least 200, yep. maybe three, yep. 400 would be yep. great that if, would if be that's awesome. possible. I don't know what that facility holds, but I hope they're ready. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they might need to uh, have a lot of space ready because <laughs> yeah. there might be a lot of fans from all schools yeah. there. So I mean, it might I be a variety. So. so, yep, I'm excited. Maybe, maybe a couple thousand people might show up for this. Who knows? Hey, so. that, that would be awesome. Um, but uh, anyway, anything else you kind of want to share about the event uh, that we maybe didn't cover? Not off the top of my head. I think you covered a lot. I guess Pretty I'll just good. finish out our interview with kind of a few fun questions. I like okay. to do that. So, <laughs> uh oh. Uh, favorite food. Uh, what is your Ooh. favorite food? I know it's a tough one. I have a favorite answer to this. It's broccoli. Broccoli? Because everyone looks at me crazy. I love <laughs> broccoli. It's weird. I, but I, honestly, I love all food, so it's hard. But I always pick broccoli because nobody expects it. <laughs> I, I actually was talking to Avery about this before, uh, and I agreed with her answer of sushi. I, I thought that was a good answer. So I do I, love sushi, I, but I, I also think that was really good. I think my favorite food depends on my mood. I gotta yeah, like, I no, don't know. Fair. It depends on what I'm feeling. <laughs> but yeah, th that was tough. I mean, I was yeah. thinking sushi was a, something that was on my mind. Um, Volcano chicken and drunken noodle, those are two Thai dishes. Ooh. I really like both of those. See, those this are is, really good. This is really hard for me because recently I, I'm, well, I'm training and trying to work out and go vegan. So this this ans this uh, question is hard for me. <laughs> so we're going to stick with broccoli and in case uh, my trainer is listening. Sorry, <laughs> I, 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 if, I, if I was going to say steak <laughs> and pizza next. But <laughs> uh, yes, I, normally yes, but I've been staying away from it. So don't tempt me. <laughs> don't tempt you. I, I, I guess I, I won't share any more about what foods I like. But anyway, uh, what's a kind of a favorite hobby you have outside of football, would you say? Oof. I hate this question because I don't think I have any hobbies outside of football. <laughs> football really is uh, a huge piece of my life, uh, both playing, watching, coaching. Like, it's just a huge chunk of my life. So it's hard for me to answer that because when I have free time, it's usually somehow filled with football. So, so no, nothing like fishing. Football or is my hobby. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, I'll, I don't do anything consistent enough for me to call it my hobby other than football. We'll oh, say that. Fa fair enough. Fair yeah. enough. So I'll so. do like fishing randomly, but not <laughs> randomly. enough to like call it my hobby. Yeah. But what's your favorite TV show movie? This is a tough Ooh. one. See, that depends. Like right now, I don't even know. I haven't even had time to watch anything because I'm focused on the girls' flag football. No. There's a lot of moving parts that I've been focused on. Um, my favorite movie is The Little Giants. Have you seen that? I have not, actually. Oh, you have I, to I watch do. it. So it's from the 90s. It's a girl that goes from cheerleader to a uh, football player. So naturally, like that was my favorite movie growing up. So I'd say favorite movie is that. Used to watch it uh, every Friday night before I played Saturdays. So favorite movie is definitely Little Giants. Sounds like a fun tradition. Yeah. So. And now you have to watch it. Now though. I have to watch yeah. it. Now I have to it's watch it too. It. So <laughs> what is your favorite song or band or, or we could do genre music? Any, Ooh, any one of those. Uh, probably rap or hip hop. Rap or hip hop? Yeah, for inappropriate music usually. <laughs> <laughs> I like pop or Christian pop music for me, okay. which is kind of interesting. But <laughs> yep. Nice. Uh, I guess anything else you want to share today? I, I mean, I think that kind of sums up a lot of what I wanted to talk to you about. 
No, I, th I think this was great. Um, I appreciate you like supporting women in sports and women in football, and I think the exposure is awesome. So just uh, keep an open mind and keep supporting women in uh, football. Oh, thank you, Chelsea. Yeah. I appreciate it and happy to talk with you. And yeah. Thank you for having me. It was a nice me. conversation, so yeah, thank you. Yeah, it was you. awesome. Appreciate it.